Okay, and this is a Yamaha RX V661 with a blown amplifier channel. Uh, because of the way the protection circuits work, you press the power button and it clicks off so fast you never even see the display come on. It's a high current shutdown. And normally you have output transistors bad, sometimes the emitter resistor is bad. On your later model ones, usually this Zener diode will be bad, and these driver transistors will be bad, and at least one of these resistors will be bad, oh, and uh, possibly this 5.1 uh, Zener over here as well. And our blown amplifier channel is this, this pair right here. I'll be checking right there once again. I'll be checking this emitter resistor. I think it's probably okay, but anyway, the uh, little uh, driver transistors of this sort right there are going to be bad, no doubt. They always are in this situation, but we'll be checking those and replacing them here up in, in due course. To a C4468. A1695 um, very often they also have a bias transistor bad under under here and uh, uh, those are a little tricky to get to but uh, we'll be checking that as well I have this same amp channel before, I can see I have pretty certain. So they, they may have a problem with their speaker wires or something. Just I removed the, the four output transistor screws on this side and I'm just loosening up some of the rest. Okay, and uh, once again, here's a, a good amplifier channel, and here's my, my blown amplifier channel. And that occurs because the, uh, uh, the output is actually shorted to one or both of the uh, main power supplies, plus or minus. That's also why they tend to blow fuses when this happens. And. Uh, Additionally, you can check. Additionally, you can uh, check with an ohmmeter from uh, emitter to collector uh, on the output transistors, and, and uh, you would read a, a short between those two, and not on those. And so, if I take a, a, a DMM and check emitter to collector on this good channel. It's charging up through the power supply, and you just see it's heading towards infinite resistance, and yet on the bad channel, see it's shorted. It's probably shorted all the way around, although not always. Yeah. Now, with those being shorted in circuit, I'm checking the emitter resistor might not be a, a meaningful test. Uh, it might kind of look okay, since they read a near short anyway. So uh, I'll want to recheck that after I remove the output transistors. I, uh, I like to visually confirm that my uh, uh, PNP and NPN transistors are uh, in the same order as the channel next to it, or as in some cases they're mirror imaged, but I like to confirm, obviously, uh, which is which. Uh, so you wouldn't want to get that reversed. Bad things would happen. definitely been repaired before. There's a uh, distinct advantage, of course, in being an authorized servicer. When you've seen these things before, you have parts on hand for what has become in your experience to be common problems. There's 
not too many substitute parts that would be appropriate or, or would work correctly in these circuits. I will be substituting the driver transistors with some other ones that Yamaha uses pretty interchangeably with these. junction on that one. And now let's check some resistors and so forth. The emitter resistor is okay. Now looking at the uh, output transistors I should have approximately Let's see, 240, 50, 60, roughly 260 ohms from base to base. If, if that's substantially off, either open or shorted, then I know I have a substantial problem in, in this area. So here's, here's the base of one output transistor. Here's the base of the other. Measure about 260 ohms. So I know that 2.4 zener is okay. I also know I don't have any burned resistors in that path at least not burned open. We have to check that 5.1 zener, those go bad a lot. It's going to be D1058. They can be a little hard to find. I've had to hunt around for them in the past. That could be it right there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's very leaky. 5.1 zener. Transistor is okay. That would be a bonus. Uh, it's kind of a good idea to clamp your leads before you bend them and form them. It keeps you from damaging it inside the inside the component itself. driver transistors. You can see they're a slightly different package and in fact they're reverse basing from the originals so we'll have to watch out for that. We have a potential bad solder connection on the bias transistor that I want to investigate. In fact I can see the dot the eyelet's been damaged at some point in the past so I use for forming the leads on the output transistors. We'll see how well this shows. Let's see here. Okay. I have these fat hemostats. I line them up with this right there, and I try and make it a straight line. Clamp them, bend them. 
and then pretty much do the same thing again. Straight line across there, clamp them and bend them. And that gives me pretty much the same kind of bend that I would have had with the originals right there. See? Bend them. And bend them. Pretty close to the original. care what they say. I like to use heat sink compound. I don't trust those rubber insulator sheets. Okay. Just about a perfect fit though those leads formed that way. think I'm going to do here. I have a power transformer with its power cord rigged up to a bridge rectifier and a couple of filter capacitors here. I'm going to uh, jumper this in here and just bring it up a little bit on a variac and make sure I don't have any excess current draw across the uh, outputs and hopefully no offset either but if I had an offset on all the channels that would just mean I didn't have something qualified for the preamp grounds. I wouldn't worry about that too much but um, we'll see how this goes. the uh, emitter resistor there and we're looking to try and see that we don't have excessive current flow there as I bring it up on a variac. Should be okay. And we had 
no current flow there as far as I can tell. Interesting. No, nothing there either. Okay, well we didn't have any uh, any severe overcurrent, so I'm gonna bleed off our resistors over our sorry. I'm going to bleed off our uh, main power supply filter capacitors over here and then put everything back together. Should work. We hope. plug something in. We'll regroup and take another look here. And uh, yes, it was this one forgot to be plugged in there. It's pretty easy to do. And let's try again, shall we? turns on and stays on. How about that? We'll click it off and back on again here. And uh, as, as always, the remainder will just be uh, ordinary reassembly and some quick testing of basic functions. This has been a repair brief by the multimeter junkie. Over and out.